Here we are. Hey team, how we going? It is Kaz from In the Trenches with Kaz and Sophia Loren. No, actually, Loren is shining. Loren. Yeah, just Loren. <laughs> if this is your first time here, team, it's great to have you on board. Let me just tell you, today has been a drama and a half. I feel like I'm on Paradise Island with my father's looks, you know, in an arranged marriage, just finding out that I'm bankrupt. Yep. It's been You're crazy. Not You're not alone. Not alone. We've both had one of those days, but we're not going to let that get in our way because that would mean that we're becoming victims, which we're not. We're not, exactly. A victim is someone that walks down a cobblestone alley and gets attacked by a vampire who takes over their doppelganger soul to be immortal. And that's not me, man. It's not me either. Come on, man. <laughs> Jerry Newman. How you all doing here? I'm blind as a bat. I haven't got me intelligence spectacles on. So can we please um, get some introductions here? I can see all the moderators are here. Yep. Um, and we've got also, we've got Kine and Peppers. Peppers. And we have a GI Super Jew, Smokey B, Connor Brown, J Baz. You can't ask the Super Jew for a loan. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh, Chongo is here. There's Midway too, is it? Is it Midway there? Yeah, Midway's here. Yeah, Guardian. Of the Galaxy. Yeah, exactly. Cooper, Faye. Don't um, stab me, Mr. Bryce. I can see his yeah. name because of its length. <laughs> We've got Dave D who would have come just for the title. I, I can see my favourite chewing gum here. <laughs> Timmy Doust is here. Timmy Doust, not Timmy Tam, which is loved by the US and everyone that loves yep. the exotic Tim Tam, are the dark Tim Tams bigger? I don't know. Bigger? I don't know. I don't think I've ever had a dark Tim Tam. Oh, they say once you go dark, you can't go back. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I do. Mr. Bryce is here, as always. I, t I, t I tell you what, guys, I wasn't almost here. I'm just going to quick give you a 30-second rundown. Okay. Took my beautiful puppy, Achilles, who is in no way indicative of a Greek hero, Took him to the park to finish my daily bread, which I haven't had. Turn up there, he gets attacked by another dog, ran out of the park, does what Dad says, that's me, and stops once he gets out the side the park. I look at this foxy, hybrid-looking reject dog, you know, and it just looks at me like, you're a pussy, not scared of you, buddy. And at five different occasions, the owner of the dog did not put it back on the lead, and this dog five different occasions, tried to attack Achilles, including using my chicken leg as leverage to try and jump up and try to bite my Greek god. Now, I'm going to let you get off the first time and then go, maybe that was not indicative behavior. But eventually I'm going to start to put contempt on the owner as much as I am the canine. Unfortunately, it got to the point where I actually had to issue the words to the dog, I'm about to kill you. You know, now, I, I think that my rules of engagement were absolutely stellar the way I held back from going to town on this dog, you know, and that owner is very, very lucky, you know, that yeah. it didn't end up in a situation if there had to been other blokes there, if they had tried to yeah. white knight and escalate it, it would have escalated, I'm telling you now. Yeah. And yeah. I would have lost yet another fight in my life. <laughs> I just think really people, if they can't control their dogs, that I'm not sure if they're a good dog owner, to be honest with you. No. You, know, you shouldn't have a dog that you can't control. It's a lack of leadership. And that's what we're going to be talking about tonight, Lauren. We're going to be talking about leadership. We're going to be talking about, for those that want to go to the OSB, to uh, ADVA, to RMC, and we've got a bit of a list here to explain to you what some of the concerns are. And some of those should automatically be, why do you want to be a leader? Normally leaders are chosen by their peers when an opportunity arises, which is completely separate to being a manager. So when someone asks you a question like I'm going to ask throughout this, you need to keep in the back of your mind that they're also thinking, I'm about to open the door to someone who one day will be a subordinate of me in an operational theater. Do they have the tic tacs it takes to make the decisions and here's a big question, Lauren. Okay. One of the key things that you need as a leader 
is moral mm-hmm. courage to speak up. Yep. But if you were in a military, especially during mm-hmm. peacetime, and you speak up, you're going to lose your job. Yep. So what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Someone with moral courage? Or mm-hmm. losing your career because you displayed moral courage and you didn't agree with or you did not, you know, um, encompass the chain of command's decision? You spoke out. It's a really yep. weird one within the chain of command. And I think the best people to tell how to be a best leader is the people that get led. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. You're probably yeah. right. I think you just got to know when to hold them. <laughs> you know, it's it depends on the situation. I think that's another, that's probably going to need some wisdom mixed yep. in there to know how to react at every different situation. We're going to follow you into hell and back and we don't have a choice. But we're going to do it looking forward if we know we can trust you and you actually have leadership. And we also know that a leader without opportunity is just someone who's a qualified manager, potentially. It's what you do when the opportunity arises, and it may not happen your entire career, that determines, did you cut it? Same as the soldier. He can train in the boxing ring, can look great on the bags, but until he actually gets into the ring, ah. He just he was just all show that was all theater yep so let's uh let's talk about a bit about this we know the chronological order for this lauren um is to go to the u session and then from there they determine through your aptitude test of the u session that you have the uh the gumption you have the problem solving capabilities intellectually iq to mm-hmm. to have a go at it and there, from there, they might say, if you consider being an officer, or you might have gone in there and said, I want to become an officer, and then they go, okay, well, let's check you out. Put the stethoscope on you and make sure you just haven't got a personality disorder. And if you have, we might kick you over to the police force because there's plenty of them there. Um, right out. So you go for your use session. We're going to be talking a lot about the OSB tonight, the Officer Selection Board. That's what that is. ADFA, ADFA, right the Australian Defence Force Academy, and then you've yep. got RMC, which is a real Royal Military College, same place as ADFA. Uh, but uh, the university degree goes with the ADFA, and actually RMC is an 18-month course, three classes, uh, third class, second class, and first class, right? yep. um, where you will follow your cohort and, and can still get back squad just like you can at Kapuka through Act of God, through Untrainability, or through back squad. Okay. This is a tough one. What I want you to do is think of yourself, not as the officer. Don't think of yourself as Dave D, you know, who's going in as the applicant. What I want you to think of is yourself as the special air service, who dares wins, Channel 7 or was it Channel 9? I don't know. I don't know. I remember. We'll make it easy for everyone. You're the Simon Cowell on the other side of the table who is doing the question asking. This is a source material from someone that was led for 24 years by some excellent leaders, but also by some that fell very short. Whether that was by design or whether that was just, you're not supposed, how can you know until you've had a go, but it's too late after you've got a commission to go, maybe I'm not the droid I was looking for. Maybe this is not what I want. It is a lonely path, etc. I just saw yeah. um, a cow that's held its breath for too long come up yeah. there. What does it say? Joseph Barker, has done the aptitude Hannah. test, all went well. That's awesome, mate. What did you um? What did you actually unlock? Did you unlock what you wanted? Request? Let us know, or I'll kill you. Um. Okay. So this is all you guys. We're gonna say Dave and Jay Hayes and Mr. Bryce are the three officers that are on the other side of the table, and I am the applicant. So the questions I'm about to give to you are what you're actually giving to me and what what my response would be. And by no means is this a hack to give you a way to look at this, memorize this, and cheat your way into being a leader. Okay, remember that. Because I believe some of the best leaders should be plucked from the OR ranks after they've displayed that they are not only have acumen in leadership, but also that they are followed, you know, by their own peers who push them forward as a natural replacement in the absence of law and order, so to speak. The collective conscience when there's no supervision. 
I'm making myself sound like I can count and do algebra here. <laughs> so, Lauren, you can be also another applicant that we go in. So we've covered often males and females. Okay, Lauren walks in, you know, yeah. straight away she's accepted because we need a quota. Okay, over to me. Um, sorry, Lauren. That's okay. You're going to get saluted now. That's okay. I, I walk in and the first thing you're going to do is look at me, look at my age, Look at my fitness, see if my hips are thinner, okay, more narrow than my shoulders. I should represent an upside down corn chip showing that I have got some sort of physicality because physicality and physical presence is an important factor. Okay, from there, I'm going to ask a series of questions, but these are some of the things I want to determine as well. Are you with me, team? I hope this is interesting. I can't be slipping back and forth in questions or I'll be straight off the off the mark here and you'll just lose me. Yep. I'll come back to you and answer your questions with the lovely Lauren's voice of angels in a moment. Thank you. Yep, you keep going. Okay, personality versus ambition. Okay, when someone comes in, I'm going to go, is there a personality disorder with this individual that wants to be a leader? Okay, what age are they? How do they look? Does it look like they would be someone that would get followed by their peers? Sometimes, absolutely not. And that's because people get a manager mixed up with a leader and they are completely separate individuals. Yep. Civilian industry, management. Leadership, military. Okay, you can still be a leader. You can. Yep. Okay, but you know, normally you're managing emotions okay, of weak-willed people at the same time as trying to perform a mission where the military complex is a dictatorship where yeah. the only thing that matters is the mission, not the emotion of those that are carrying it out. So yeah. personality versus ambition. I want to see the swagger that you've got, collective confidence. Is it legit? Okay. Is there ambition you want to make it all the way to the top? Or is there just that you don't want to be told what to do? You think you just want to be an Instagram commander. So I'll work that out. And that'll be an ongoing theme throughout all questions. Okay, I'm going to ask, who wants to be a leader? What sort of person wants to be the leader, wants to take on the burden of command, wants to be in charge of the ship, wants to char uh, carry out the lonely path? And if so, there's a big difference between someone that's going into it older, which are saying, I actually know that I can do this, you know, yeah. And I'm sick of being silent. I want a voice. I want to be able to solve the problems. My work ethic has already proved that I'm up to the task and I think I can do a better job. That's awesome. But if it's someone who is just 100 miles an hour, you know, and they don't like being told what to do, their ears are sealed closed and their mouth is propped open, clockwork orange, then maybe we need to look at them. Okay. Quali qualified leaders versus leaders created. Just going to RMC and ADVA doesn't make you a leader technically. It does officially, it gives you a commission, but technically you're not a leader. You might be a manager until you show that you've actually got what the cut is and that'll normally take between four and 10 years. Um, and I believe that lieutenants are lieutenants for about four years too, too, too little. You should be there for at least four to six years or up to eight years, and then from there it can accelerate to captain and major, etc. Because um, great lieutenants will normally end up being great captains. No one's a good captain, they suck, and their job sucks, not them. Some yeah. amazing people are trapped in, um, in uh, limbo as a captain. But then you've got leaders that are created where opportunity arises, where RMC will still create a pecking order he or she who really stands out amongst their peers. Not just as proficient with equipment, but that person that is always reliable when it's freezing cold, when everyone's tired. That person that always puts others first, but still achieves an excellent result and is able to still maintain friends and influence those around them and especially above them. Because if they can't do that, they'll be ostracized. And everyone inside their triangle command uh, or uh, chain of command will then suffer as a result of an unlikable boss. And sometimes the boys love the boss, but the boss doesn't like, uh, is not liked by his boss. Yeah. Okay. So opportunity is the fertilizer of leadership. Mm -hmm. That's true. We've already spoken about that tonight. Dave, 
you know, you'd know that's true too. You know, who steps up, okay, when the time is now or nigh, as we would say. Exactly. You know, I, exactly. I put on I put on here before Lauren the video about what is leadership, yeah. and it was all civilians at a university and workforces that were talking about bullshit. You know, mm-hmm. managerial bullshit about uh, homogenous feelings in the workplace. You're going, that's not a leader. That's a manager. Exactly. Look, the leader means I don't ever have to meet any of his soldiers, but I know that I can give him a problem and he'll come back with a solution because we're in a career where 100% of the time we have to win. Even when yeah, we do exactly. win, we lose people. Yeah, there's no wiggle room there whatsoever. You see, this is where I get confused right yep because i'm a girl well maybe (laughs) maybe it is because of that but to me where is the responsibility on being able to manage your own feelings on the actual employees is that not their responsibility instead of if a leader's time is all taken up with hr and problems like that at which point is the responsibility on the employees to make sure they are fit for the job? And, and that's another reason why the military shouldn't be focused as much on mental health with soldiers. Yeah. You know, as soon as someone shows up, they are present, that should be pushed away to the side where an organisation within Army keeps them in yeah. uniform, um, puts a wing around them and protects them because the rest of the group still has to prepare for game day, yeah. for state yeah. of origin. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, no, that seems crazy to me. Or brown paper bag esque. Picnic. Hey, Timmy, oh, how you going there, mate? Mr. P, great to have you here. Uh, is. Yeah. Um, so I, I liked your question of who is a leader, right? Who hmm. wants to be one? Because sometimes, you, if you've ever been in like a team building exercise or there's a group of people, you, or you watch Survivor even, and there's always this one person who just tries to install themselves as yep. the leader and they become instantly hated, you know, and people just go to do the opposite to what they say. Do you ever get people like that? Absolutely you do, and that's personality over ambition. But this is where the military complex is so good compared to the civilian sector. They will put you in a herd of like-minded peers who want the same outcome, but for a prolonged period of time, and then take away sleep, deprivations, present them with problems, so you can't fake it for 18 months. Right, yeah, you know, exactly. You know, and, and your peers will do uh, peer-on-peer evaluations, so what the instructors see you know, is different to what the trainees see, and the trainees will go, no, 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 no. He's told you exactly what you want to hear that he is. We see a different side when you're not looking. Yeah, exactly. Twins. Not- one of them's always evil. Yeah, because there's nothing worse than that <laughs> that one person on Survivor who just instantly thinks they're the leader, they're the boss, they're the smart person and look- than anyone else. And if I was going to go on Survivor, the yeah. first thing I would say is, I'm not trying to damn myself here and I don't want to be a leader. But what I do suggest is each one of us is the leader for one day, you know, yeah. if we could have a group meeting and, and who wants to go first? Now's your time you can put your hand up if you want, but I suggest that we have some sort of chain of command within the tribe because that works and everyone gets a chance to rotate through that and own the bad decisions that are made. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah as a leader, like Kyman said, a leader can use that hate to unify a team. I guess an important thing for a leader is to also not always make the popular decision be able to make a decision that might be not so popular and that's why you stay disconnected and a officers not to be friends with the soldiers the platoon sergeant will make sure that doesn't occur there is no advantage a familiarity between the lieutenant and the private soldiers you know Um, he can get a little bit closer to he doesn't talk to the lance jacks either they're not in his realm they're not in his lane but he will get close to the section commanders because they're tactical commanders and that's as far as his voice should go, other than a one to two minute conversation occasionally with the soldier to get to know them, but remember what they say. Um, yep. Most of the information that happens to a, uh, on a private soldier when he has his monthly report from his platoon commander should actually be fed for him, 90% of it, from a board of studies from section commanders within the platoon. So the delivery comes from platoon commander and platoon sergeant. Yep. 
Is that how it works or is that just how it should work? Well, it's such a rush, rush process. It's how it should work. It's not how it does work. So new leaders here, you know, anytime you want, I can tell you what it's like to be led and what it feels like to be failed, you know, and we can make you different yeah. and different is the closest thing to greatness. Yeah. And, and I think Steve's made a valid point there where he said a leader can't be friends with privates. No. No. And because even as a boss in a business, you can't be friends with your employees. That's right. You just can't be. It doesn't work. And, and when they try to be friends with, the, with an officer, they normally get told, pull your head in, stop sucking his dick. Exactly. You know, yep. pole smokers, that's what they call them. Because you need, you need to have a, a, you know, a ship needs a captain. You need to have one voice that when, pe when you say something, everybody else jumps to it. Well, the most dangerous person is the second in command, isn't it? Yeah. Because if you put thing in a, a family hierarchy of, of needs, the person before you wants your job. That's exactly. why the sergeant is so valuable to you. He doesn't want your job. Yeah, and I suppose with leadership and all those other leaders, there comes politics. Absolutely, there is. In a battalion, there's a lot of it. Mm. If you don't feel like you're getting invited to conversations in the conversations, goddamn about you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Here's one. You know, when you okay. walk in the room and you feel like, huh, I just feel like the elephant in the room. I've just been spoken about. Look at Julius Caesar. He got murdered for no reason other than the fact that he was highly successful. Yep. That's the only reason. Yeah. You know? And Brutus, his only family, his yep. own family member, E2 Brutus, was the yep. one behind the co-conspirators. So here's a question, Lauren. If you were standing beside me, and I had, yep. g'day JJ, how you going, Navy man? Um, here's the questions. I'll throw them at you and myself. So if you walk in, they put in, and they're going to try and put you on the back foot straight away because you have to come up with the answers because you're saying you've got leadership and you have to have professional confidence slash professional arrogance. Okay. Okay. Are you a leader? Yes. Okay. Yep. No worries. Okay. You, you sort of passed so far. If you said no, I go, then get out. You came to the wrong room. So you've said you're a leader. No worries. Naturally, that is now going to branch off to the drop box. It is... What is the obvious question that's going to come after that? It's probably going to be why. What makes you think at your age, at 19, that you're a leader? Give me some evidence right now. Give me some evidence why you're a leader. That's a tricky question, isn't it? Not you know, if you're a school captain. Not yeah. if you're a rugby league captain. Not if you're a hockey captain. Not if you were a, um, a netball captain. Not if you were... Uh, someone that owns excessive denim that shows people that you can bring dance to the town. Yep. But they're going to ask you, and you better have a goddamn answer, because if you can't tell me why you think you're a leader, I'm going to switch straight back again. Yep. Beep, beep, beep. Go back one question and think, this is now starting to look like a personality disorder. And this is why we have this video, because guess who they're not asking to, to uh, enlist, Lauren? Yeah, right. People over 25 years old. Yeah. You see, can, yeah. but they're asking young people, then expecting them to answer questions with the wisdom that Nemo right. didn't have that his father did. Yeah, right. That's, that's a little bit of a worry. Well, it is. Because okay, they're expecting to have the answers instead of going, this kid has got what I believe is the format to become something greater. We've just got to put leaves on those branches. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So here's the next question. We've determined that you said you're a leader. Let's yeah. just say you were the captain of the, of the yeah. school, which I think is a fantastic one, but is also yeah. a sign of pole smokers a lot of the time too. Um, <laughs> but you're an academic. You know, everything seems to be fine so far. Well, let's ask the next one because what I'm trying to do here is catch you yeah. out. I'm not here to think you're awesome. I'm probably a 45-year-old guy who's looking down at a 19-year-old person. There is nothing you can do to impress me, but there's plenty you can do to get yourself kicked out. So we've got 10 people in front of us today, OSB. We're normally between 8 and 12 people, I believe. Um, and I've got to 
ask everyone similar questions, but there's also a lot of wiggle room to how I ask them. I hope you just like the background here too, team. Um, the, the red beating heart, the dark heart of Kaz and Lauren. Yes, it suits our mood. <laughs> if you set fire to someone's body, will they eventually get heartburn? Okay, stay with me, team. I hope you're enjoying okay. this. I'm with you. Let's go. Okay. And then I turn okay. around and go, leader, mm-hmm. tell me who inspires you from history. Which leader? Right then. What if you don't know a single one? What would you be thinking, Lauren? Well, I, I would be thinking of several, you know, like I, I think Napoleon and Joan okay. Mark and a lot of people from that video that you put up the other day. Okay, and then what the next question is going to come up is go, why? Tell me why. Tell me yeah. why you chose that person of yeah. two and a half thousand years of existence. And yeah. let's go back to um, 153 BC, the first uh, professional army started by Gaius Marius. Tell yeah. me, why is that person inspired you? You, you yeah. must have a reason or are you just trying to tell me something to keep yeah, me happy? Yeah, moving your gums, yeah. And I think, you know, well, for me, with Napoleon, it was his gumption. He he took his opportunity to get rid of those nobles and to make that um, the Council of Three and to, you know, install himself. He was such a great leader. There was nowhere he couldn't go or at least try. His defeats didn't end him either. You know, he, mm-hmm. he kept going. And, and when yeah. he came back from ostracision at Alba, yeah. the fact that he came back as one man, and inspired an entire army exactly. to yeah. turn their back on Biden and follow him exactly. and then became his army. You can only do that if he has leadership and they think that they're going to come with you and he captured their hearts. He did. He yep. did. Exactly. And they yeah. followed him into hell. Yeah. And Joan of Arc, because being such a, um unlikely character to be able to get the attention and, and be able to inspire soldiers, hardened veterans, to be able to inspire them to have the confidence to to go into battle like they did, and, Battles, and, and faithfulness to her nation. And, and she also, it wasn't just soldiers, she inspired yep. other inspirational figures. She yep. inspired leaders. Yep, and absolutely. That, and then died on the cross where she wasn't tied, uh, died on the, um, sorry, yep. on the stake where she wasn't tied to it. One of the conditions was she wasn't to be tied to it. She had to be there voluntarily. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, but all of it, I think people should go check out that video you made because all of the leaders you put on there are, are worthy of researching and looking into. Absolutely, and they can become your sources. And Dan Carlin is the guy you need to go to as the best source material that will give you a completely immersive podcast experience where you can come away from there, not just using it as a source because it's used at West Point too, okay, but you can actually use it to come back and say, this is the person, this is why, and he stood out. One word of warning. Do not use Monash. Do not use Chevelle. Do not use military Australian leaders at all. The reason why I say this, if you're going to go to an OSB, go Tyson Walker. How's Grace? Hope she's well. And I hope that um, that Justin okay, and Lincoln are doing really well as well. Carl P, if he's there. Um, okay, excellent. Do not use those because... Sorry? Why should they not use those sort of leaders? Well, that is going to be the most regurgitated leaders that the yeah. officers that are asking you are probably guaranteed to know that person inside out. Yeah. And and I don't mean in a Navy kind of way. Doot, doot. Okay, um, they're going to know that. So all of a sudden when you say a leader that they know off by heart, they're going to start yeah. to listen. Does this guy, how deep does he know that character? And now I'm going to ask questions. But if you came up and said Trajan, okay, yeah. who, cost, who crossed into Dacia, okay, yeah. and, and beat uh, Decabalus, Okay, the, yep. the Dacian king, where a cavalry yep. commander cut his head off and now his headstone can still be found as the king slayer, then they're going to be actually inspired and listening instead of assessing. And they're going to know, this guy is not a poodle faker. He actually knew what he was talking about. I'm going to go and read a little bit more about Trajan, even though yep. you might have read all this on Trajan's column, etc. when you're in Italy, which yep. is now illegal to spend over a thousand euros in one um, purchase. 
what? cashless society, we're heading towards it real fast. And I think Australia wants to be first. Yeah, we'll have to talk about that at some point. Um, can I just cut in with a... Absolutely. Quick... Intermission, Oliver, here we are. Oliver MB said, I enlisted today and I'm in the hotel overnight in Sydney right now. We bus to Kapuka tomorrow morning. I'm super stoked, hoping for a great career in infantry. That's fantastic. Oliver, when they give you push-ups, I want to say, please, sir, can I have some more? You make sure you do that, Oliver. For those that don't know, Oliver is part of 8 Platoon, we're going to call them, because the rest of his platoon join tomorrow. Oath of Affirmation, don't put the hand on a slant or you'll look like you're from World War II. And we don't want to do that. You might get uh, accepted by the socialists, but you won't be accepted by the rest. Um, yeah. Uh, so what's happening is 8 Platoon, about 11 of them, are in Sydney right now getting ready to diddy mail the village on the bus tomorrow yep. okay to go down and then commence their career so they're there right now and okay every bit of food needs to be on a tray so good day to him too and to all of those that are in eight and nine okay we'll call it eight platoon because they got there first then we take our hat off if we could because we didn't have headphones on to say your journey's about to begin you can turn up with no money you know, this is the opportunity for you to stand up and remember your uniform, the name. Okay, once you get that on your uniform, that is your family name. That is not just yours. You need to earn that. You need to make it shine. If you come from a family of losers, but this is you're the first one to break away, then you make that name an honorable name. Yeah. You know, yeah. you wear it with pride. And if you're not yeah. proud of your name, then make yourself proud of that name. Yep, you make your branch of the family tree the strongest. That's right. And, yeah. and, and you help your brothers and sisters, but at the moment in quarantine, do not get too close to each other because you might find your personalities don't gel and it's not until you get to Kapuka where you realize that you have to band together that you haven't actually damaged your own personality by blabbing too much to be accepted by a crowd and then get yeah. kicked like the little bird out of the nest where everyone already knows too much information about you. Yeah, exactly. About mm. our conversation, uh, democracy has suggested. What about Churchill? What if they mention folks like Churchill and that? Yep. He, look, they don't have to be a military leader, just yeah. a leader. Something that they did was that was against the status quo, or the person that stood up, you know. And I'm going to say Donald Trump against the establishment when everything was against him and said, "Not on my watch. I can do a better job." And actions, not my personality. Because to tell you the truth, I don't give a fuck about the personality of a leader. I care who gets you home safely, who's got the best chance of getting you home safely, who loves their country. Because if people aren't patriotic, that means they're also never going to do volunteer service. Yep. They'll do the bare minimum to feed themselves in the pantry and probably won't leave enough for others. And that, myself and Vanilla Ice say, is a felony. Yeah, exactly. Okay, well, here's what about a controversial one? Dun, 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 dun. That's fine. The military will have no problem with that. Okay, yeah, awesome. Okay, tell yeah. me. We don't see our enemies. You can be great, but not good. Great yeah. means you were different. Great means you did something that made you stand out in history. And if there's a statue about you, then chances are yeah. that you may have been great. Probably not a great idea to drop the H-bomb, though. You know, the, to say that. No, 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 no. But you no, know what? No. If you read that, guys, they there's uh, yeah. there's plenty of videos where they read his speeches out to university students in the USA and didn't tell them who it was or the tone it was delivered in, and they said that's an amazing person. I'd follow him. And they go, we well, already are sort of. Yeah. You're already yeah. a socialist. Yeah, just don't don't do that one. When they said it, who it was, they were like, oh, oh, I can't believe that. You go, yeah, yeah that's what education does. It makes you realise. That yep. sometimes our gut feeling, you know, can scare the shit out of us. Yeah, just also probably don't go in there trying to be controversial either. Well, controversial, here's a, here's a good one. Too. You don't try to win. Mm. Here's one for you. Yep. Be prepared. G'day there. Uh... 